the things I've really I've really loved is I did uh, two books by Richard Yates. One was called Easter Parade, and uh, I wish I could remember the name of the other one. Uh, but they were they were the, the, he's such a beautiful writer, and they were really uh, fantastic to do. And then I did the uh, the um, Jack Finney book. The 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 source material for Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh yeah, uh, uh, and I, and and that was really fun to do. Um, I did a Max Brand book, Beyond the Outposts, which um, I took a really kind of weird spin on it, and and I think it kind of works, and I love doing that. Middlesex was tough to do because it's a lot of voices and it was an interesting problem I'm, it's a transgendered person who's the who's the um, narrator of the book uh but it, it, it you know people really seem to respond to it and i i i took a kind of you know i just you know i kind of just go for things and uh, maybe a little uh, irresponsibly but it's it's kind of the fun of you know the the weird thing about audiobooks is that there's there, there, there there's no cop you know there's nobody sort of telling you you can't do that i mean with the exception maybe of yuri when when he was producing uh, them but for the most part you're you're kind of in in on the open sea and so it's fun to sort of say i'm not sure this is going to work but i'm just going to try it and the worst that happens is you go back and re-record. But the, what's cool is you're kind of uh, you're, you're 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 scatting in a kind of wonderful way um, as the reader. I mean, obviously you're all you've got the book always sitting underneath you to to you know to keep you on hopefully on terra firma. Uh, but I I really enjoyed sort of some of the riffs in Middlesex. And I did a book. Also, I wonder if it's on here. I'm looking. I'm looking in the um, on Audible because it gives me all the titles, uh, but I don't see it here. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of it. Uh, I, if I can, I'll 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 send I'll send you the name of it. Very interesting writer. He's the guy who wrote the the Huckster. Uh, it's an earlier book of his that I did, and it's quite mad. I mean, it, it, it sort of the last 30 pages are kind of like psychedelic dream almost. And it was, I was all alone. I was doing it at, uh, what's their name? D Dayan, D Dayan or Dayan Studios. And oh, they yeah. just sort of lo lock you in a room, you know, and leave you there. And, you know, you're sitting doing the punch and roll, yeah. which is such a weird way of working. But, you know, it's okay. And, uh, and, and, and I had to get finished because I had to get on a plane to fly somewhere. And so, I mean, I did this sort of marathon session and, and I'm like, you know, you know, there's no air con in this. So you're like, you, it's like you're in a, you know, in a Finnish sauna and, you know, I'm sweating like a, a stuck pig and I'm, I got a time lock that I got to get this thing finished and I'm like on a roll and there's of course nobody in the room, no TikTok, who's got a very interesting set of little films he makes, you know, about being an audiobook recorder. And he's, you know, less of an actor and more of a kind of voice guy. Um and very technically knowledgeable and, 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 and sort of invite, and he has one of these kind of voices and he, and he, he's very engaged with his audience and sort of saying, here's what it's like. And often he's, you're, you're listening to him in the room. He goes live and lets you sort of watch his process. And he shares with you his process, which is, he's oh, very really thorough. You know, he does these little sound bites, which he keeps in his computer, so he can always go back and have a reference to, you know, you know, was it Southern Irish or Northern Irish? And did I, you know, was he, you know, barrel voiced or, you know, was he high pitched or, you know, whatever it is. He, like Barbara you know, Rosenblatt. I, I don't know who that is. What about Scott Brick? Oh, I know Scott very well. I don't know what Scott's process is. Scott's a, a, a it's sort of a fan of mine and has been an advocate of mine. Uh, but I don't, I don't know much about what his process is. And he, obviously he's a real, you know, he's really into it. You know, he, yeah, I interviewed him. yeah, he, he's a, you know, he, he's turned this into a real industry. I met him uh, at the audio awards too. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I like yeah. him very much. Yeah. What did you think bit. of uh, Fame Island? What did I? Th- you mean what did I? What What do I think of your book, or what did I think of the recording? Which, the are, recording. which question are you asked? I I can't tell you. I have I'm very uh, subjective when I do this stuff. You know, I just go for it. And and in that case, I think I had uh, I I had Yuri. Um, so you know, I I figured if if Yuri wasn't looking at me like I'm a fucking idiot, then it must be okay. Um, okay, we're we're talking about Yuri Rosovsky, just so people know. Right. Yeah. Uh, and 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 you know, I would just look up at him every you know after you know reading twenty pages, and if he wasn't looking at me like I was totally insane, then I figured, okay, well, I must be somewhat on track. Um, but he 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 was very he was also great about kind of letting me go. You know, because on Middlesex, you know, I went. I mean, I had to do some. It's I mean, it's an amazing book, Middlesex. Um, but I, I know I love doing your book and I remember having a lot of fun doing it, you know, and I, I, I hope I served it well. <laughs> I have no idea. I really am. I'm not kidding. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just try to honor what's on the page and try to be present and try, you know, it's that balance between trying to meet the require, especially in, 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 in nonfiction, to meet the requirements of character and tone, you know, that you're in a, a romantic scene or you're in a kind of, you know, action scene or you're in a thriller scene or whatever it is. It has its own sort of texture and tone, honor that. And then, you know, try to, without getting too character give the indication of character. Vic Morrow was amazing. He was an extremely intelligent man, a wonderful actor, very collaborative, very, very, you know, he was sort of the, you know, he he came with a kind of swagger because, you know, he had had such a great run as a television star and he, his generosity in on, on the set was just fantastic. I, I admired him greatly. He, he keeps transmogrifying and becoming, I think he's up to HK 55 or something like that now, but it's essentially the same character. Rod Taylor is so underrated and he would, in that movie where he played, I played his sort of stupid son and he was uh, this guy and we all, the plane goes down in the desert and it's all about, you know, how we survive. He was so good in that movie. I mean, so he never, he never put a dishonest moment forward. Is that the one that that you were flying a plane onto an aircraft carrier? That's right. That's the one. I knew Michael Douglas from New York. He had, um, he was going to do a play with my stepfather. Uh, In fact, he replaced me because I was going to do it. And then I went off to do something else. Um, uh, What was the name of the? play um pinkville um my george tabori and um so and and also he dated um brenda vaccaro and brenda vaccaro was my brother-in-law's first wife my brother-in-law was a guy named marty freed who was married to my sister and he had previously been married to brenda so there was there were there was kind of odd relationship there and so I went out and did Streets of San Francisco, and um, and we sort of hung out together while I was doing that. We were he was very nice. I liked him very much. He was very generous to me. He made it with Dennis Weaver, where basically the same concept: a sort of hick cop goes, you know, after people, and they all think he's an idiot because he's from he's from the sticks, and you know, that, it was that game that they were playing with it. Yeah. Well, you- no, that, you were in the Rockford Files twice, and that you played a, a singing star. That's right. Would you? Would you? Two parter. It was a two parter. Uh, uh, um, uh, Jim, uh, Jim, Jim, James Garner. Uh, I had done a series with him like two years before, and he really liked me, and uh, so I, I sort of was a favorite of his, and he was, uh, yeah. It was, you know, he was great to watch. He was, again, such an expert. You know, he knew so much about film acting. It was to be, you know, I, I can't tell you how marvelous it is to be this close to an actor and to see their skill, room with them, 
you know, as opposed to standing back and watching from a monitor or watching it then cut together or whatever, you know, you're in a different, you're, you have a different sort of, you have an intimate relationship because you're, you know, his line is feeding yours and you're playing off each other. And, you know, he was a very skillful actor. I mean, really, you know, he, you know, we, it was fun playing the scenes with him because he, we, he liked to act. And I think he loved it when he had an actor that was, you know, throwing it back at him and uh, he enjoyed it. And uh, I enjoyed working with him. Television series called The Big Easy. And I, I, I didn't want to do it. And, and I, I, I arrived in New Orleans and I felt really put upon and I, and New Orleans was just seemed out of control to me. And I thought, what the fuck am I doing here? And uh, about day three, I suddenly went, you got to change your mindset here. This is an incredible place. And I think by day four, I was in love with New Orleans. And well, you know, I, I, I used to live there for a couple months. And uh, my photographer yeah. that I took to Palm Island and the Grenadines uh, lives there. Yeah, well, it's an amazing place, as you know. And it changed my life. And I yeah, I've, I've been there twice. I, w I was on a cruise ship there one time. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite place is Tahiti. Oh, sure. Well, you know, when you start going to places like Tahiti, then you get into the cultural sort of differences that are part of what makes places like the Philippines and I think Thailand as powerful as they are. There's a lot of spooky stuff going on. And then yeah. right at the very end, you've, it, I came up, it just hit me. The ending just hit me out of nowhere. And, uh, it was a perfect ending. How wonderful! So it, it, your 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 industry is really uh, admirable. You know, it's really wonderful that you 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 you're so focused on getting these things done and out. I I, I admire you for that. Mm -hmm.